Shalom and uh, welcome everyone to class. Thank you for uh, joining the class on children's ministry. Uh, we'll begin. Um, last week we began looking at the great spiritual need that is there among children and how it's important for us to cater to that uh, spiritual need. We also looked at the uh, divine call that uh, the role of a teacher is a divine call and um, the qualifications for a teacher and we looked uh, we start, began looking at the messengers and the methods uh, the messengers and the methods um, that are needed to proclaim uh, the message to uh, children uh, of course by the empowering of the holy spirit so we began looking at uh, who the messenger is and uh, you know um, how they need to um, you know uh, prepare their lives um, and how they need to align their lives to this divine calling of a teacher uh, so that they can effectively minister to children so we we'll continue looking at that we looked at uh, only one point we looked at uh, uh, that a messenger needs to grow and mature in their walk with god uh, we'll look at few more points and then we'll go on to the methods that we need to use to proclaim um, the message, the gospel, the truth in God's word uh, effectively to children um, and of course by the empowering of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so before we begin doing that, can one of you please lead us in prayer, please? Anyone can lead us in prayer? Let's pray. Lord in heaven, we thank you for this wonderful day that you've given us, Lord. We know we are not here because of our power, oh my, mighty, but we are here because of your grace and your mercy. Lord, as we attend this class, Lord, bless our lecturer, bless the kids who are already on the call. Lord, also bring on those ones who are still on the way who have not yet joined. Lord, let us only not hear with our ears, but also let's, let us also hear with our brain. And let us also not only be here, but also, also do as we do pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And everybody says, Amen. 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 Thank you, Lubega. So we'll continue looking at uh, who a messenger should be or how they should prepare themselves as messengers to effectively teach children, minister the gospel to them. The first one we looked at was, uh, you know, a messenger must grow and mature in their walk with God. So they need to, we as teachers, we need to grow in our understanding um, of the word of God. We need to grow stronger in our prayer life, um, mature and grow deeper in the things of God. Okay, so if we need to be faithful uh, people who teach God's word, you know, then we need to be faithful students of the word of God ourselves, even before we um, teach. Okay, and of course, we all have the greatest um, infallible uh, teacher. Who is that? Who is the greatest infallible teacher? Yes, thank you, Jeffina. The Holy Spirit, infallible means somebody who is perfect, dependable, and flawless. So, you know, when we have uh, 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 him uh, with us, he can teach us and guide us and how we can simplify concepts, simplify doctrines and truths and teach them in an effective way to um, children. Okay. Um, Second Timothy uh, chapter 2 verse 15 says that we need to study to show ourselves as ones who are approved by God, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay, so before we um, write, teach God's word, we need to be people who study us ourselves study so that we can show ourselves as ones who are approved by God, who are rightly dividing the word of truth. Also, when we uh, spend time with God, we are um, receiving fresh revelation, understanding of God's word, and that will help us to minister um, 
effectively to children. Okay. The second thing a messenger should do is spend quality time with the Lord uh, because ministry is basically an overflow of our time with uh, God. You know, if um, our time, if we are not spending time with God, then, you know, uh, we are not uh, uh, growing in our spirit, man. We will be, people will be gratifying the desires of the flesh. We will not be able to overcome temptations, the weaknesses. Um, we have nothing fresh to uh, reveal to the children, share with them, because we are not experiencing God, we are not encountering Him, we are so busy with our own lives. Uh, so it's important that, you know, um, we are spending quality time with God. Quality, I, I've, I've mentioned the word quality there because it's not a ritual that, uh, you know, we do just read the word and pray, but, you know, spending quality time with the Lord so that um, our ministry can be an overflow of our time with uh, him. The third thing is um, what we read in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24. Uh, can somebody read uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24? It's on your screen, please. Anyone can read that aloud? He who called you is faithful and he will do it for you. Amen. Thank you, John Paul. He who called you is faithful and he will do it for you. We, we learned last week that, you know, being a teacher in children's church is one, is a calling. It's a, it's a ministry uh, office. It's a ministry gift. And along with an apostle, a prophet, a pastor, you know, uh, a teacher is also one who is called and ordained by God for that specific uh, office. So... <clears throat> It's an important calling. It's an Im important ministry office that we are called into. And even as he has called us, you know, he is faithful and he will do what is needed and what concerns us. But, um, uh, you know, we need to also be faithful to what he has called us to do. So we need to do our part in preparing um, you know, in uh, spending time with God and receiving from Him, praying for the children, uh, mentoring, preparing for our class, make the class more engage engaging for the children, uh, interesting, and uh, present the truths in a very uh, creative way. When we um, have that kind of desire, we take that kind of time initiative, you know, God will do His part. God will do His part in equipping us with creative, uh, 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 you know, creative things that we can do, creative ways that we can teach. He'll give us the skills, the talents. Um, he will give us the grace and the wisdom that we need to transform the lives of um, children, okay? And uh, he will be faithful to doing his part, even as we pray for them, even as we pray for their salvation, even as we pray for their holistic uh, development you know god will be faithful in raising up a godly generation uh, for his kingdom and for his glory amen uh, i think uh, it's very important that we need to be very faithful sincere you know wait on the lord uh, uh, for me myself you know being in children's ministry um, uh, by nature i'm not uh, creative in the way that you know my hands i wouldn't be able to draw a straight line or cut straight you know i'm not good with craft work and things like that but um when it came to children's ministry and you have to be very creative you know in in ministering to them and doing things that are very creative um i used to get downloads from heaven you know uh, i used to just pray and god used to give me downloads even with simple things like when we had our we used to have our kids conference basically we call it kids conference y'all will call it as vacation bible school you know even what decoration to how to decorate the hall you know um, and how to do various things, what are the topics, uh, you know, what new initiatives, ideas to bring about. Everything God would just show me, he would just put it into my heart and my uh, mind. So I stand uh, a testimony for that and I testify that, you know, uh, God is faithful in, in just um, 
releasing uh, you know the skills the talents the creative the creative ideas that we need uh, to minister to children but we need to be faithful on our uh, part and even we know this verse he who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it well he's called you into this ministry office whether you are a pastor your prophet an apostle a teacher he's called you into that office he's ordained you into that office and uh, you know uh, he, he who began that good work in you will be faithful to uh, complete it and i just stand testimony to that and testify to uh, the fact that yes he is faithful he is good and he will just do it um, as far as you are willing to uh, work hard stretch do what is needed and just uh, you know uh, 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 have the whole idea that children should grow up in the ways of the lord should be trained in righteousness and holiness the fourth thing is that you know as uh, messengers you know we are basically ones who are building the lives of uh, children okay so you know what a builder does right uh, when he has to build a building you know or if you are uh, planning to build a house or um, you know uh, whatever uh, what should you do first or what will a builder do before he builds a building foundation go right away and, uh, do a foundation jeffina <laughs> what will he do first yes lubega I think you must have a plan a plan yes the first thing is you have to have a plan in place which means you know uh, how many rooms how many uh, uh, you know uh, floors you're going to build uh, based on that you will you know think about number of you'll go to uh, then you'll go to an architect they will have a plan for you and then you will you know after that what will you do you straight away go and start building your plan will also include whether you have the finances right how much will it cost do i have it should i wait should i raise up more funds and all of those things so um uh, a builder you know must have first a plan in place before he erects a building in the same way a teacher who's building the lives of children you know must have definite objectives okay a teacher must have definite objectives okay and uh, they should look at each child and consider as each child as one in whom you know certain things have to be in accomplished so when you have uh, uh, sheep under your care that god has entrusted to you as shepherds you need to have definite objectives and you know you need to um, know what you know uh, each uh, consider what uh, each child uh, whom you're teaching or ministering to uh, what are the certain things that have to be accomplished okay so as a teacher's priority is to teach the word in such a way that you accomplish those um, objectives or you have programs you have uh, things that you uh, plan for your children's church or your sunday school with this definite objectives in mind of course you have your vision so it's important to have a vision statement and a mission statement and then you have your objectives that would you know cater to your vision and your mission statement and then you will um, likewise think about your curriculum your programs that will help uh, you know uh, attain your uh, vision that you have and um, you know you don't have to think about okay what is the vision statement i need for my for my children's church or sunday school if you are someone leading it you basically just wait on the lord because he knows uh, what he wants to do with his church and with the children in in the church that you are leading you just wait on him and he will give you the uh, vision he will direct you and he will uh, guide you okay <clears throat> so what are some of the definite objectives uh, that we need uh, uh, to see accomplished in every child 
okay these are definite objectives it will get apart from this you can have other objectives which can cater specifically to your uh, 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 a, a, to your geographical location and to your children in your ge geographical location and your churches as well okay so the first thing is that we need to uh, teach the word of god in such a way that every boy and girl will be convicted uh you know of his need for christ and accept him as their personal savior so this is a definite objective that we need to have that each child will be convicted of their need for christ and they will accept uh, the lord jesus as their personal savior so everything that we do will be focused around this will uh, would want to achieve this objective and all of the programs as well uh the second thing is that they will be taught to live by faith um service this right and wrong okay so a uh, couple of things here the first thing is they will learn how to live by faith they will learn to live a life of holiness because god has called us the standard that he set is be holy as i am holy you know and they will be able to serve the lord um and also they would know from his word what is right and wrong and they will do what is right they will not look for uh, uh what the world is saying is right or wrong they will not look at uh, media and internet for what is right and wrong but they will be firmly established in the word knowing what is right and wrong the third thing is uh, they will know how to claim Christ power and live um, and serve him okay so um like i said last week they will not just have a form of godliness in denying its power but they would know uh, you know how to claim Christ power over their lives over their situations the challenges the temptations that they face and you know they will claim god's power over every situation circumstance weakness challenges temptations and they will learn to even serve him in power okay so the teacher's objective is basically to give every child you know an op opportunity to receive christ um and also to lead them into an assurance of salvation and build them in the things of god okay so as teachers we need to um look at each child in a class whether they are their souls are saved or they're unsaved if they are saved then if they are walking in that light of uh, who they are they're calling their identity you know um if they're saved are they growing in the things of god they are they growing in the spirit man if they're unsaved you know continue to pray for them so then give them opportunities and teach them and lead them to um salvation so uh, as teachers we need to make every effort to win each child to christ and of course satan will attempt to put this thought away put it off but you know and uh, we can sometimes even lose a child for eternity we never know if we have a child we we'll see a child next sunday or in a month's time their parents may move from city to city uh, one country to another they might not come so you know uh, every opportunity you have to share about salvation and the love of christ okay and uh, that is what even christ has asked us to do he has assigned us as believers uh, with the task of winning the lost souls in mark chapter 16 verse 15 jesus said go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature okay and if you look at second peter chapter 3 uh, verse 9 um can somebody read that please second peter chapter 3 verse 9 this is in yeah can somebody read second peter chapter 3 verse 9 please it says the lord is not slack concerning his promise 
as some count slackness, but is long suffering towards us, not willing that any sh should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Okay, so God is not slack in His promise. It's only some when it does not happen. The slackness is from our end, but He is very patient. Long suffering is He's patient, and He's not willing that anyone should perish, but all should come to um, repentance. You know, so um, this is very important that we need to see every child as whether they in our class whether they are their souls are saved or unsaved, and we need to. Uh, lead them to have a personal relationship with Christ. Uh, you know, this person called Edward Kimball, you know, when Edward Kimball, uh, you know, he went down to a shoe store at Boston and uh, he wanted, he, he specifically went towards that shoe store not to buy uh, sh uh, shoes for himself, but he wanted to lead one of his Sunday school uh, children uh, to Christ. Okay, and little did uh, Edward Kimball know that you know this young man or this young boy who he is going to share the gospel uh, or salvation in that shoes who worked in that shoe store would one day become one of the greatest uh, evangelists. Okay, um, uh, this uh, this teacher, the Sunday school teacher, you know, he did not wait for this young. D.L. Moody to come to him and say, I want to receive Christ. But he just felt such a deep stirring and prompting in his heart to go and share uh, the gospel with him. Um, and uh, Edward Kimball, as, uh, as a Sunday school teacher, felt that it was or believed it was his duty, his responsibility to go to his uh, students, his pupils, and share the uh, gospel. So when he went to that uh, shoe store that day in Boston, you know, he had uh, a very little courage. You know, his courage failed and he kept walking up and down, back and forth uh, in front of the store, uh, just gathering some strength or some courage to go into the shoe store and to share the salvation message with Moody and ask him to accept uh, Christ. But eventually he does, uh, you know, take uh, that courage, that step of boldness. He goes in, he shares um, about Jesus with D.L. Moody, who's a small boy working in that shoe store. And, you know, we know what um, a great evangelist he became and how God used him um, mightily. So, yes, it takes uh, courage to win souls, but God will give it to us. And it's the Holy Spirit that, uh, you know, convicts people of sin, righteousness, and judgment, as we read in, um, in John chapter 16, verse 8. Okay. So, uh, a teacher's definite objective, one of them, we mentioned three, but one of them is to give every child an opportunity to receive Christ and lead them to the assurance of salvation and build them up in the things of God. Okay. So, um, this is about uh, uh, the messenger. We will look at the methods. Before we do that, anyone has any questions? Any questions? Anything you'd like to say? Anything you'd like to share, add? So far, so good on my side, teacher. Thank you, Lubega. What about the others? Everybody in class, or uh, are you all thinking about your assessment? Don't worry, I'll give you extra time for assessment if you need. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Yeah. All good, Pastor. Okay. So we'll, uh, thank you, John Paul. We'll continue. Uh, so we basically looked at the qualification of a teacher. Uh, so we also said that in children's ministry, the messengers and methods are needed to proclaim the message through the empowering of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we looked at what a messenger should do to effectively proclaim the message. 
Now we'll look at the methods a messenger or a teacher should incorporate to effectively communicate the message in a very relevant way, in a productive way uh, for children to uh, receive, understand, and to apply and make it part of their uh, lives. Okay, so we're going to look at various methods. Um, uh, the important thing to start with is, you know, uh, 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 you know, when you are teaching in children's church, it's important to choose. Uh, it's important to have a good curriculum. Okay, that is very, very important to have a good curriculum. So, uh, having a good curriculum means choosing relevant topics for the children that you are teaching. Um, as well as preparing a lesson plan. So uh, two important things, choosing a, a relevant uh, curriculum with the relevant topics that will cater to the children in your children's church. Now, children in different children's church um, uh, will be at different levels of spiritual understanding. Um, for example, when I took over the children's church at All People's uh, Church, they were in a place where, you know, they were quite grounded spiritually. Uh, they knew about, uh, uh, you know, they, most of the, the narratives in the Bible they were familiar with. Uh, so we wanted to just move them from uh, level A to level B. Okay, so that is why we thought of writing all the topics that we teach at Bible College. We'll write the topics for these children's children's church. Of course, we tailor make it to their various um, uh, levels that they are in. So we basically have three levels: level one, level two, level three. Level one is grades two to four. Level two is grades five to seven. Level three is grades eight to ten. So we have a teacher's manual where we have everything. Uh, written out, uh, you know, in detail, everything that they have to say, do, every, all the attention getters, object lessons, application, follow up, everything is uh, just um, written there. All they need to do is just read, prepare, uh, pray, and uh, teach it because we know that, uh, you know, nowadays people are living in a very busy world. They won't have time. And also it's important to keep them aligned to the right doctrines, to the right teaching and not take off in a tangent. And some of them are so excited to teach that they can teach from Genesis to Revelation, uh, which is another, you know, uh, uh, so it's important to keep things focused. Also to keep in mind the developmental needs, how to what to share to that specific age group. So it's important to choose relevant topics um, before you start writing or preparing for each Sunday. So you don't just get up, you know, uh, on Saturday and say, oh, tomorrow I'm rostered to teach. Uh, what do I teach children? So, okay, I'll just teach them the story uh, because I read this in my quiet time this week. It really ministered to me, so I'll teach them. No, it's good. You need to prepare a curriculum. So how do you prepare a curriculum? you choose topics that are based on the developmental needs of children in that specific age group, okay? Now, I don't uh, agree to teaching children from grade one to grade 10 uh, at the same time, okay? I know some churches, they do that. They just teach children from grades one to grade 10. I feel that is very ineffective because you know, when you're ministering to children in grade one and two, children in grade five to 10 can totally be disconnected. If you're trying to relate to children in grade eight, nine, and 10, children in grade one, two will be disconnected. It's important to cater to those specific developmental um, needs. So maybe you can put them in various groups like grade one and two, grade three and four, five and six. Um, uh, seven separate, maybe eight, nine, and ten, or seven and eight separate, nine and ten uh, together. Okay, so um, how do you choose the topics? To a topic should be based on the developmental needs of the children and, you know, what are the spiritual needs. So if you look at the notes that I've uh, shared with you, that each developmental um, uh, for each de the de developmental needs for each age group. I have mentioned the spiritual needs, uh, what we need to cater to so you can 
look at those and then you can think of topics for that age group. Now, I've just kind of um, uh, listed out topics for ages five to seven based on what is their spiritual needs. So basically this age group would like to talk about creation. So um, what do you think are, so once you think about creation, you can think, okay, under creation, what is the um, objectives that I, or what are the points that I am going to speak about? Because if you talk about faith, if you talk about the love of God, there are different uh, dimensions to a specific topic. So we want to just cater it and, you know, narrow it down to that specific age group. So for ages five to seven, you know, when you're talking about creation, I would just like to mention to them that God created everything perfectly and God has made uh, everything very special and unique. Okay. Now to cater to this uh, topic and to what I have thought about, uh, what are the narratives from the Bible that I can choose? You know, children in this age group, five to seven, they love uh, creation stories. So the you can talk about Genesis 1, but you would have already done that when they are in kindergarten, ages th uh, three and four, because they like creation very much. So you would want to move that to a, a little upscale it. Uh, so you can think about uh, what are some of the creation stories that you can talk about in the Bible? What are some of the ba Bible narratives that you can use for creation as creation story? Any thoughts? Apart from Genesis 1. I think Genesis 1 usually goes with John 1. Okay. But don't you think John 1 is a little more highly or deeply theological for grades 5, ages 5 to 7 to understand? I'm talking about ages 5 to 7. Sorry if I mentioned grades 5 to 7, it's age 5 to 7. Can I have a primary source and a secondary source in my lesson? Yes, you can. Then I will use the forbidden scripture, which you've refused us to use as my second resource. <laughs> <laughs> Psalms 90. Okay. Actually, if you're, uh, we're not, uh, when you're saying about John chapter 1, it's more, it's not a, it's not a story. It's, uh, it's a, a, a passage that you, you talk about a specific doctrine. So I'm looking more for the sense of a story. Uh, Jesus tells the storm, okay, and talk about how, you know, uh, because he created everything, it obeys him, okay, and uh, uh, God made the sun stand still. So God's power over creation, he created everything through his power, through his word. So when he speaks, they obey and they uh, listen. So I would use these two narratives. The second thing, uh, second topic I would go for this age group, five to seven, is that they are valuable to God and to others. So what are some of the narratives that you would choose for they're valu valuable to God and to others? Any Psalms narratives you can think of? Psalm 139. Okay, when I'm talking about narratives, I'm basically talking about stories because for children in this age group, we need a story. Uh, if you were preaching in church to adults, we could use, uh, you know, the Psalms or John 1 or whatever you are suggesting. But here we're basically looking at stories from the Bible. Maybe the story of Zacchaeus we can use to say that they are valuable. Okay, Zacchaeus, yes. Also, prodigal son and also when Jesus said, let the little children come to me. 
Okay. Prodigal son, about the 99 uh, sheep, uh, the, the shepherd leaves the 99 sheep and goes looking for the one lost sheep. Yes. I uh, basically uh, put down Jairus's daughter who was raised back to life uh, because talking about how valuable she is to her parents, how valuable she is to God, her life is so valuable, and also about the Israelites crossing the Red Sea, you know, that uh, they're so valuable to God, God is, you know, even willing to make a way for them, because I was thinking about all of the other, the prodigal son, Zacchaeus, I was thinking it for other topics uh, in the curriculum. So, uh, like you all are saying, you know, once you put down the topics, then you look at what is the best uh, story that will fit that topic, okay? Uh, the next one, next topic is God loves them and he loves everyone. So which is the, which is the narratives or stories that we can use? Hmm? Again, prodigal son, yes, Zacchaeus, okay? God loves them and he loves everyone. Which other story in the Bible? I added Jonah's story as well because um, the God, even though the city of Nineveh was very wicked, he loved them. He wanted to save them. He loved Jonah as well. He rescued him from the belly of the, sh uh, the fish. So these are the three uh, stories that I would think that would fit this topic. God loves them and he loves every one. The next topic uh, for this age group is God knows you. Okay, uh, so basically uh, narratives on uh, God knows their needs and he provides for them. God knows their needs and provides for them. So God knows you is the topic. And the basic idea is God knows their needs and provides for them. So what are some of the topics that you, uh, the stories in the Bible that you can, would you think would be suitable? Story of Hagar, yes. Elisha the, story and the, 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 the story of the lilies in the garden. Okay. What else? Elisha and the widow lady, yes. Abraham sacrificing Isaac. Okay. okay. And then he went for fishing. Okay. Okay. The story of Jonah and the city of Nineveh. Okay. I have put down basically Jesus feeding the 5,000. Okay. Uh, Bartimaeus, even though Jesus, there was a big crowd, Jesus heard him, ministered to him. Uh, God, God providing mana and water in the desert. Okay. Uh, of course, you all can, can you, choose your own topics and add that. Sorry, success. Can you show the woman of issue of blood? Can you go for that? Yes. Why not? You can um, do that as well. Yes. If you're not talking about Jesus as a God as a healer is one of the topics, then you can use this. Or if you're not talking of faith, you can use this as well. Yes, that's what I'm saying. You can you can uh, use the, uh, narratives, but ensure that it's it's ministering to the main uh, topic that you are uh, going to teach them. The next one is God hears our prayer. Hannah, okay. <laughs> what else? God hears our prayer. Daniel. Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Okay, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Okay. Peter begging Jesus when Jesus was walking on water. Okay. Moses when he cried out for the people, okay. Hannah's story, okay. I chose God protected baby Moses because their children, ages five to seven, they would connect with how a baby is being killed and you know thrown into the river Nile and all of those things. They feel for it, so uh, they will connect easily. 
I chose Jehoshaphat's story because God hears our prayer is because when, you know, when they had this problem and, uh, you know, um, children will identify when there is a war and, uh, you know, it, children went along with their parents to the temple and they prayed and they, you know, God helped them so they would see the answers to prayer so that children will identify with that story and that narrative. And also uh, Jonah, you know, uh, I, I chose Jonah because... Uh, uh, children will identify with that again because um, they're also naughty. They don't listen. They they uh, they want to do their own things, and then they get into a problem. They cry out to God. So the, it's important when you choose stories and narratives that it's not um, catering to our adult mindset. <laughs> you know, so that our adult mindset, some of the narratives will be fine, but how will it cater to a child in that age group? whether it's going, they're going to sense uh, or they're going to feel with that story. They're going to put themselves in that story and um, uh, they would know. Uh, even like, um, yes, Daniel, you know, Daniel prayed in the lion's den. So he's in a, in a problem, in a difficult situation. So they would um, understand uh, that. So I, I'm choosing all these narratives based on, you know, how children will identify themselves and their felt needs will be connected to what we are narrating to. It's very important if if their felt need is not connected to the topic, to the narrative, they will be totally, they will disengage themselves and they will not understand because, hey, this is not relating to me. I can't understand, you know. But when you talk about narratives that will uh, relate to them, uh, it will help, okay. Um, then we're talking about the nature of God. God is dependable, trustworthy, uh, always good. What are some of the narratives that we can use? God is dependable, trustworthy, always good. Daniel in the lion's den is a good example. What else? provision of the children of Israel in the in the wilderness of 40 years yes that's also good narrative Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego is also good because children face those things in school they challenge to stand up for God you know uh, I would also think about Joseph they would identify with Joseph as well so that is uh, son. so these are some of the topics that I have put down based on the spiritual needs of children in ages five to seven. And I would end this with uh, sin and salvation. Okay. So um, what are the basic topics? I would think about sin and salvation is everyone has sinned. God sees our sin. There's a cost for sin. And Jesus is the answer. Just basic, simple things. Everyone has sinned. God sees our sin. There's a, pay, a, a cost for sin, and Jesus is the answer. So what do you think is the best narrative that we can choose for everyone has sinned? A story for this Noah, okay? I would think of a woman caught in the act of adultery. Uh, but you can, uh, it's difficult to explain to children what adultery is. So we basically say that she was a bad woman. That's it. And we leave it at that for them. You know, <laughs> uh, God sees our sin. Which narrative in the Bible or story in the Bible would be, would uh, suit this point. God sees our sin under uh, the topic sin and salvation. Ananias and Sapphira. Yes, thank you, Divya. Even Jeffina was saying Ananias and Sapphira. Okay. Anything else? How about the story of the prodigal son? Oh, sorry. Can you say that again, Lubega? The story of the prodigal son. Sorry, story of the prodigal son. Okay. I thought of Aiken. Aiken sin and disobedience. When the place of Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay, yes. I thought of uh, Aiken's uh, sin when he and God told them when they 
go and attack Jericho. They should not take anything. And uh, how God brings out Achan's sin. Okay. Um, cost of sin. What is the cost of sin? What are the narratives or stories you can use for cost of sin? Okay, and Ines and Safira, yes, thank you, Dibia. The story of Elisha and Bahazi. Yes, the healing of yes uh, Elisha and Gehazi after the healing of uh, Naaman. Yeah, okay. I thought of um, Cain and Abel's uh, sacrifice. Uh, you know how God warned uh, Cain and then how God uh, punished him and how he was sent out from God's presence. So how sin separates us from God and sin you know, takes us away from the presence of God and moves us away from God and we're open to uh, the attack of the uh, enemy. Uh, and Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. The cross, okay. I can talk about the story of Shaul, all Paul at Damascus. Okay. Nicodemus. Nicodemus, okay. I would talk about Adam and Eve and how sin entered the world and how God created everything perfect, became imperfect, how uh, sin separated us from God and how God promised when he was, um, uh, you know, even punishing Adam and Eve that, uh, you know, there would come, uh, the seed of the woman will crush the head of the uh, serpent. I would just kind of say that he promised even then that, you know, he will send the Messiah. Okay, so these are basically the topics that uh, we would choose for ages five to seven. Now, how did I choose and prepare these topics? Not because I felt like or liked them, but uh, it was based on the spiritual needs or the spiritual message that children in this age group need to hear. Okay, now once you list out the topics, then for each topic, you need to write out the learning objectives for each topic. So if you look, we had suggested quite a number of topics here. Now for each topic, you need to write down the learning objectives. Because if you're talking about um, creation, there's so many aspects of creation that you can uh, talk about. But what is the specific thing that you want to, uh, that children in this age group should know? Uh, and also thinking, okay, this is something too far-fetched for them to know at this age. They, maybe it can cater to children in a higher age group. But for this age group, what about uh, the learning objectives? Okay, so how do you write out the learning objectives for each topic? Now, the, uh, the learning objectives for each topic should just be very brief, uh, clear, specific statements of what... Uh, you know, you want to achieve in your lesson plan and what you want the learners to be able to learn and practice and do at the end of the lesson, okay? And uh, uh, learning objectives is important for us to spell it out, write it out, because, you know, it will help us to write out the lesson, keep it tailored to what we are trying to say, um, you know, and also base our activities um, and uh, knowing that in the end, whether the children have, you know, learned the objectives, we have reached our objectives and our objectives have been, uh, you know, fulfilled. So uh, based on the objectives, you know, then you choose the Bible stories. Okay. Now, for example, Jesus is the creator. Uh, I have listed out... Um, you know, just uh, three uh, uh, objectives which I would like to teach is for this age group is that God created everything through his spoken word. Okay. He created everything beautiful, perfect, and in order. And he created everything and all creation obeys him. 
Okay, so that is why I chose um, the Jesus in the storm and also um, uh, Jesus makes the sun stand still because he created everything through his spoken word. And uh, he also created everything beautiful, perfect, and in order. And he created everything. And that all creation obeys him. Okay. Uh, we'll stop here. We'll come back after break and we'll continue. Thank you.